Well, happy Friday, everybody. I'm so glad you've joined me for our devotion today. We are wrapping up the book of 1 John. We are looking at chapter 5, and while you're opening your Bible there, just want to encourage and invite you to attend this Sunday evening at 5 p.m. as our worship choir presents a Christmas program, and then following the Christmas program, we'll have our old-fashioned Christmas social where everybody brings their favorite snacks. You know, things like like brownies with no nuts or fudge with no nuts and, you know, sausage balls and whatever you like to bring. And no, we don't have a ban on nuts in the church, although maybe we should, but nuts in the candy and stuff, I just said it because I don't like nuts in it. So bring something good. Join us for the Christmas program with the worship choir at five, and then we'll have some cider and other drinks and some good fattening, tasty uh, church snacks uh, together afterward. All right, 1 John chapter 5, and before I share with you a devotional thought, uh, I wanted to do just a little bit of, of teaching, if you understand something in here that either you just read over or some of you said, I think I know what that means, but I'm not sure. So let's look at that. It's verses 5 through 8, 5 through 8. Let's read that together. He says, who is the one who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So he in, in this chapter earlier, he's talking about, is Jesus the Christ? Is he the Messiah? And the only one who overcomes is the one who believes that, yes, he is the Messiah. He is the Savior of the world. Now, verse 6, um, this is the one who came by water and blood. What does that mean, Jesus came by water and blood, Jesus Christ? Not with the water only, but with the water and with the blood. It is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. Verse 7, for there, there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and the three are in agreement. Now, what does that mean? What is that talking about? Well, over the, the, the centuries of church history, there have been three primary ways of understanding this passage. And what does it mean to say that Jesus came of water and blood and that there were three who testified, water, blood, and spirit? One um, common uh, interpretation of this passage is that the water is referring, referring to when the, the Roman soldier with his spear, as Jesus hung on the cross, pierced his side and water flowed out mixed with Jesus' blood. A second common uh, interpretation is that it's referring to the, the physical act of Jesus' birth. When Mary gave birth to Jesus and, and it's the, the, the bursting, the breaking of her water at birth, and then, of course, the blood would refer to the cross. The third interpretation is is that it's referring to when Jesus was baptized, the water is, refer, referring to when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. And as he came up out of the water, uh, the Spirit of God descended and the voice of God, the Father spoke and said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And so it's referring to the Father speaking and affirming the deity of Christ when he was baptized in the Jordan River and then, of course, the blood is the cross. I tend, uh, and none of us can say definitively, but I tend to think the third option is the accurate one that is referring to Jesus' baptism at the Jordan River and the voice of the Father saying, this is my beloved Son, and then the cross. Now, one of the reasons I, th I think that interpretation is accurate is he talks in here uh, about there being three witnesses. And in the Old Testament, as well as in Jewish culture, um, you needed two or three witnesses uh, at trial to convict someone. That was the, the, the Jewish legal system based on the Old Testament laws for the nation of Israel, two or three witnesses. And what he says here, the question at the beginning of chapter 5, is Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, is he the Savior? And the answer is yes. And just as in the Old Testament law, there are three witnesses. The Holy Spirit, um, when he, the, the Holy Spirit, the blood, and the water, the water being when Jesus was baptized and God the Father spoke. And it's really the Trinity. So you have the Holy Spirit is listed. The Spirit is a witness. 
Jesus himself is a witness by, by his death on the cross and shedding his blood. And God the Father is a witness when, when he spoke at Jesus' baptism and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So I think that's what this is referring to. Um, now, uh, devotionally, what spoke to me is verse 3. So real quickly, let's look at verse 3. He said, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. And we can say a lot about that verse. One thing is that we show our love for God by obeying him just as disobedience shows a lack of love. But what spoke to me is the last part of verse 3 where he says his commandments are not burdensome. His commandments are not burdensome. Why? It's because we love him. When you love someone, it is a joy to do for them. When you don't love someone, it's a drain to do for them. It's a task. It's a burden, if you will. It's a duty. That's one of the problems with, with Christians who have more of a legalistic mindset is that this legalism, these do's and don'ts, robs them of all joy because when you do everything out of duty or have to, instead of want to and love, um, it becomes a burden. But what he's saying is when you love Jesus, when you love Jesus, when you love Jesus, you will obey him. Why? Because it's what you want to do. It's just natural. When you love, you do for. When you love, you serve. When you love, you care. And that's not a burden. That's not a joy. It doesn't mean it's never tiring or taxing or challenging, but it's a joy. It's not a burden. And uh, so legalism, legalism is damaging on so many, many levels. Also, if you allow yourself as a follower of Jesus to, to, to fall in love so much with the culture and the culture's ways and the culture's pleasures. It's going to dampen your love for God and it's going to make your desire to obey God and his commandments diminish. And then you find yourself starting to argue with God. Well, I know the Bible says, but I think and I feel and what about? Because you're trying to you're trying to find a way out of obeying God because it's become a burden to you. Why? Because you're not really loving God the way you're supposed to. When you love God, you obey his commandments, not because you have to, but brothers and sisters, because you want to. And, uh, well, that's the message for today. I'll see you Sunday morning in church. you be here for one of our three services, 8, 30, 9, 45, 11 o'clock, and invite someone to come with you and then join us Sunday evening, 5 p.m., for the Worship Choir's Christmas program and bring your favorite Christmas snacks, whatever you want to bring, and homemade, homemade is better. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday, and then we'll see you Monday as we, what do we do Monday? We're looking at James. We start in the book of James, chapter 1 on Monday. See you then.